Well, g'day guys uh, and welcome back to another episode. So once again, this one is completely different from last week. This one is my journey into the world of spearfishing. Now, why spearfishing? I'm gonna be brutally honest through this. As a fisherman, I've never thought too much of the old Spearo. Some of you fishermen might be looking at this right now going, yep, neither do I. They always beat you to your spot and put the fish off the bite. I've always felt like as a spear fisherman, you can just dive down, pick your fish, bang, shoot it. There's no real uh, challenge to it because you can just go under a rock where it's hiding in its hole. If they're not on the bite, shoot it, you know, basically stone it and bring it up. And I just really felt like there wasn't too much of a challenge and um, that's just the honest truth to it. So, you know, as a, as a fisherman, um, yes, that's how it's been. Now that I've looked into it, the world of spear fishing, it is, I would say, more challenging, scarier. You're putting yourself in a lot more risk in a lot more ways. You can die a hell of a lot easier spear fishing than what you can fishing out of a boat. And now I 100% feel as though you earn your fish as a spear fisherman as much, not more, not less, but as much as a fisherman does. In this video, guys, you're gonna learn a lot about the human body. You're gonna learn exactly what it can take. You're gonna learn the dangers of spear fishing. You're gonna hear from a doctor about what it does to your internal organs and stuff like that. It's gonna be a really cool episode, so stick with us, guys. You're also gonna see the first few times we go spearing and just what happens. I come face to face with one of my biggest fears in the water, and that's a shark. Uh, so this one's a really cool one. Please sit down, relax, grab a beer, and uh, take you along for the journey. All right, now the first reason I started wanting to spearfish is because I wanted to add another dimension to our channel. I don't want it to just be just fishing and all that sort of stuff and camping, so spearfishing, I uh, wanted to add into it. I also want to learn more about the underwater sort of stuff, and uh, to be honest with you, I wanted to be put out of my comfort zone, which I 100% have been. I spoke to a couple of really good spear fishermen and they pointed me in the direction of Adam Sellers. Now, Adam runs a, a free diving course up on the Sunshine Coast, also uh, down near Byron Bay. He does it overseas and all sorts of stuff, but I contacted Adam from The Pressure Project and he said, yep, absolutely, ran me through what they do. And um, I booked in and within two weeks, I was up there doing his course. If you are thinking about getting into spearfishing or free diving, I cannot recommend Adam and his course any higher. This isn't a paid promotion. I paid a full price to go and do the course. It's just made me feel so much more comfortable in what the body can handle, diving down and um, all that sort of stuff. So I'll run you through quickly what we learned in the course and um, this is gonna blow your mind. On the first day, we arrived at Adam's course. I uh, went up there for the weekend. It goes for two days. The first day is theory and then a bit of pool work. The second day, after you pass uh, all the tests that you have to pass, you go out on a boat and you dive the HMAS Brisbane, which is um, a big warship that was sunk about 17 years ago, I believe, off the Sunshine Coast. So upon walking in, uh, there was a few guys I knew there and then a lot of guys I didn't. Everyone was there for the same reason, basically um, to learn how to get deeper, to learn how to dive safer and to be put out of their comfort zone. First off, um, Adam talked to us about the human body and what it can take. He talked a little bit to us about shallow water blackouts. He then put a blood oxygen reader uh, on one of the boy's fingers. We all then had to hold our breath for about a minute, minute and a half, I think it was, before we all sort of went <gasps> and had to take a breath. Now, Adam pulled the blood oxygen reader off and the blood oxygen level reading was still 99% oxygen in the blood. We had used hardly any of our oxygen, yet we had to take a breath because it felt like you're gonna pass out. Why? why when we have so much oxygen left in our body, we have to still take a breath. And this was the interesting part that I didn't know. Some will, some won't. But it's a buildup of carbon dioxide in your body, which becomes toxic to your body, which makes your body want to expel the carbon dioxide. Hence why when you get to the top of the water, it's like a 
breathing out, then a deep breath in. Your body wants to get rid of that carbon dioxide. So it's a buildup of carbon dioxide rather than the lack of oxygen that's making you want to breathe underwater. Now, if you don't take my word for it, I'm gonna pass you over to Dr. Mike. Now, Dr. Mike is a lecturer at a university. He's got arms as big as my thighs, and he also happens to be my next door neighbor and a very knowledgeable man. He's gonna explain exactly what happens to the body and why this all goes on. Thanks, Adam. Hi, I'm Dr. Mike from Dr. Matt and Dr. Mike's medical YouTube channel. Let's talk a little bit about breathing. Did you know that your stimulus to take the next breath isn't due to a drop in oxygen levels in your body, but due to an increase in carbon dioxide levels in your body? This is interesting and leads to the question, why? Well, let's do this experiment. If you right now were to hold your breath and measure what's happening with the oxygen levels and the carbon dioxide levels, what's gonna happen? <gasps> what you'd find is the oxygen levels will drop quite slowly while the carbon dioxide levels rise quite quickly. Now this is a problem because carbon dioxide is the exhaust of our cells. When we make energy, it produces carbon dioxide as a byproduct, throws it into the bloodstream to go to the lungs for us to breathe out. But while it's in our bloodstream, the carbon dioxide binds with water and that produces something called carbonic acid. Now this isn't a great thing because, well, think of the term acid. An acid will make things acidic and it's going to change the pH of our blood. If our blood becomes too acidic, our proteins don't work, enzymes don't work, and our cells don't work and we get sick very quickly. So our body has evolved mechanisms to pick up this increase in carbon dioxide. Brilliant. Now let's talk about what this may mean when it comes to swimming or diving. A lot of people tend to hyperventilate before they hop underwater to be able to hold their breath for longer. So they start to go and the reason why they do this isn't to increase the amount of oxygen in their bloodstream, it's to get rid of the carbon dioxide in their bloodstream. Because if that carbon dioxide's gone, then their stimulus to take the next breath well, it's gonna be delayed, isn't it? Because the carbon dioxide levels begin here and have to rise, 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 rise in order to say, hey, now it's time to take the next breath. The problem with this is our brain has evolved a way to manage carbon dioxide itself. When our carbon dioxide levels go up in our blood, the blood vessels in our brain dilate and get larger to try and get rid of that carbon dioxide because it's a byproduct. But when you hyperventilate and your carbon dioxide levels drop or plummet significantly, the blood vessels in our brain constrict and get smaller. Now this is a problem because it means the brain has limited blood flow and you pass out. So often one of the reasons why people tend to die in swimming pools or die when diving after they hyperventilate is because they pass out due to the constriction of blood vessels. So it's really important to keep in mind this important aspect of physiology, that our stimulus to take the next breath is not a drop in oxygen, but it is an increase in carbon dioxide. All right, thanks Dr. Mike. So that's exactly what happens to your body and why you need to breathe. So that's super interesting. So now I'm gonna to touch on the aspect of this whole thing that I didn't expect, and that is mental health. I've touched on mental health in a video before. I don't go there very often, but in this case I will. So everyone struggles at time to time in life, whether it's kids or work or relationships or money, anything, everybody has a struggle. I lead a very busy life where I just cannot sit still. My brain goes 100 mile an hour every day, all day until nine o'clock at night when I park my ass down on that couch and I watch telly for an hour. We go to bed and repeat. So for me, this was a surprise when Adam got us to all lay down and secretly put us into a meditation. Now, at that time, my mind just stopped for the first time in I don't know how long. And we sat there for probably five or 10 minutes meditating without any of us knowing. He then brought us back um, to reality and said to us, when was the last time that you just totally focused inside your body, had nothing going on outside and just fully had time for yourself? I don't know the last time that I did that. And for me, 
that was like, oh my God, uh, this is so much more than just learning how to spearfish and adding something to our YouTube channel. This has become something, I enjoyed that time so much just thinking about nothing, I wanted more of it. So this whole video, this whole spearfishing thing has now become a way for me to relax, believe it or not. Now, since that course, I've started yoga. I do yoga now, I do it three hours a week, and that's three hours a week, I think of nothing else but my breathing and myself, and I just take a little bit of time out to chill, and it's worked wonders. Um, I can't recommend it highly enough. So I'll move on now to what we did in the pool. What they did then is taught you how to slow your heart rate down, and we did a static dive in a pool, which is basically floating in the pool, face down, slowing your heart rate and holding your breath with the person next to you in a controlled environment for as long as you possibly can. This was really quite nerve wracking, believe it or not, just staying there for as long as you can. I couldn't believe the results. The first time we held our breath and the, and the instructor told us to come up it was a minute and a half, felt like 20 seconds. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I could stay there all day. Um, after a while, a few more tries. I ended up holding my breath for four minutes and 15 seconds uh, whilst just laying still in the pool. I couldn't believe it. So if you slow your heart rate down and relax, it really allows you to just hold your breath for so long. So that was unbelievable to me. Another one we did was um, diving underwater and swimming for as far as you can. We did 50 meters underwater. Everyone pretty much did that. All right, two things I'm very worried about with spearfishing is sharks and shallow water blackout. Now sharks, I can't control. Shallow water blackout, you sort of can. So I asked Adam a lot more about the shallow water blackout. Mickey and the boys I've dived with, um, they have, not from their boat, but another guy has actually had a shallow water blackout and got uh, spearing and kingfish. And um, they had to give him mouth to mouth till they got back to the beach. He was already gone well before that. He'd been underwater for like 50 something minutes. Uh, he was dead and um, helicopter came in and yeah, he was gone. So it's very real and uh, it's something I'm super aware of. You know, I have children. I always want to come home to my family. I asked Adam about shallow water blackout. He told me how it works and what happens. So your subconscious mind will protect you and say, you're doing something very silly here. I'm gonna put you to sleep. Just before that happens, it will automatically make you expel all your water or whatever could be in your mouth. So you purge your water out, you go at that instant, your throat closes up to protect anything going in. And then your body starts sucking the oxygen from all over your body to your vital organs to keep you alive for as long as possible. You have four to seven minutes, I believe, after that shallow blackout happens when brain damage will set in and then you're dead, pretty much. So it's um, a very real thing and this is why I did that course. It's also why we dive in numbers and it's made me feel a lot more comfortable after doing the course with knowing how to handle a shallow water blackout, signs you can look for, etc., from your body. Um, your body can be convulsing and you're still okay. My body was convulsing when I was doing that static breath hold and I knew I was okay. Some people will start to um, lose their vision um, and stuff like that. So Adam said one of his things before he blacked out one day was he his vision went all blurry. So he knows he's okay if he's convulsing or whatever, but once his vision starts to go, he needs to come up as soon as possible when he's free diving. So yeah, that's touching on that. Okay, so the next day, I managed to pass everything. I managed to do my breath hold. I managed to do my long distance swimming. I managed to do my rescue. I passed. So the next day, we all jump on a big boat and we go out to dive the HMAS Brisbane where we have to complete a 10 meter free dive down a rope. And then we also have to perform a rescue at five meters. And then you've got your free diving certificate and you get to go and dive the HMAS Brisbane. So the viz wasn't great on the HMAS Brisbane. I didn't get any video footage, but what Adam did get is a few really cool still images um, of me going down through the stack and coming out the window and stuff like that. I believe that was about 10 to 12 meters. That was really good. So if you're gonna get into spearfishing guys, I can't recommend 
the Pressure Project, Adam Sellers course, highly enough. It is amazing and it's actually changed my life in more than just being able to dive deep and safe. All right, guys, now let's get into the action, okay? We're gonna start in a controlled environment. So we went down to a river just in northern New South Wales. The boys took me down there. It was a very safe place to get comfortable being in my gear. It was a place to, you know, test out everything was working well, um, get my goggles set right, and it's a place where you can actually spear a fish sometimes. So guys, let's get into the action. There we go, got to squeeze into my gear. Yeah, mate, you got some gear to squeeze it into. Mm -hmm. Diving for jacks along here, eh? They're nice fins. Apparently I bought good fins. You did. I don't even know. If you, if you, <laughs> if you die, can I get your fins? Yeah, mate. <laughs> if I die, he said. Last time I tried to get in my wetty top, I got claustrophobic. Because <laughs> I had no lube. Apparently I get a lube up. You got a lube up. Alright, here we go. Oh, man. That shit stings. <laughs> That's what you want. I didn't get nowhere near that. Guy. I know. That's How right. easy does it slide? I was like, like, yeah. 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 Yeah, I feel, do very, feel very slippery. Yeah. And then just slide it to where it feels comfortable on your arms and that. It feels comfy. Mate, I look like a diver. Look at me. <laughs> Fishing gear's uh, for sale, if anyone wants to buy it. <laughs> All right. Literally ready to go. Just got to put fins on. And the other thing I'm nervous about is, I don't know if I'm strong enough to load my gun. <laughs> I reckon I'll be all right, but uh, I don't know. Anyway, today's all about getting in the water for the first time with all this gear on, getting weights right, just starting to get comfortable because apparently we're going offshore very shortly. So yeah, anyway, let's see how we go. You ready, mate? I won't lie, I'm quietly nervous. <laughs> I think Sarah's gonna like you in these clothes, mate. Look at you, look at that cute little bum. Hey. I would add three jacks in the boat by now, boys. Yeah. As you can see here, I'm using the skills learned in the Pressure Project course to breathe up, slow my heart rate before I dive down. Now diving down, equalizing, I don't know why, but I felt it a lot easier to equalize with my snorkel in. And a habit I have to get out of really quickly is forgetting to take my snorkel out when I get to the bottom. You can see here with my rear end floating up in the air, I'm a little bit underweighted, but once you get over 10 meters, that uh, positive water pressure, it really starts to push you down. Just uh, checking in with Mickey here, letting him know I'm all right while having a look around. That was my first dive I decided to do without my spear gun just to see how everything was going, make sure I could equalize properly and everything worked pretty well. Feeling confident in my breath hold and my gear, I decided to start taking the spear gun down in the hope of spearing my first fish. It was really pretty cool to see what was under these pylons and just all in between them. Getting used to equalizing and diving down and then holding on to the bottom and relaxing in that turbulent water while you've got five kilos of lead strapped to you while anything could be around you and also trying to keep your shit together to try and spear a fish is something that was sinking in pretty quick for me. Putting all these things together is a lot easier said than done. 
You can see here that the current is really starting to pick up by now and a lot of sediment in the water making the visibility a lot less. I was starting to think here that my chances of shooting a fish today were really, really low. So it more became about getting comfortable with my gear and comfortable with diving at depth and, and getting used to holding my breath for around that minute mark. Here I was at about eight meters and I looked to my right, in between all the columns I could see uh, what I knew was a mangrove jack and quite a big jack at that, it would have been close to 600 mil long. I tried to stick my gun in to have a bit of a shot but he moved in further. So I tried to stay patient, I even tried to flick up a little bit of sand but I couldn't get him this time. But as they do, my GoPro stuffed up and missed one of the most important parts of my spearfishing that I can never get back. The GoPro let us down. Oh, <laughs> now the GoPro's giving us curry, but how's this for a first fish to spear? The boys spotted him. So I turned around and he just turned side on. Boom. <laughs> Cannot yeah. believe it. To say I was stoked, well, that was an understatement. Disappointed that the GoPro missed that moment, but still happy nonetheless. Now, even dispatching of a fish underwater is difficult. Trying to cut the gills and brain spike it while trying not to stab your hand is a little bit of an art, it turns out. But there you go, guys. My first speared fish. A bloody good mangrove jack. Well, with the current picking up and the visibility getting really bad, we started to head back and call it a day. Have they some coin, mate? <laughs> you gotta make some coin, find it everyone's gear. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, back home. Um, yeah, totally forgot to film anything else after we got out of the water there. I was pretty excited. I tell you what, it's really good fun. I had a really good time and I can see myself doing a lot more of that. The boys were unreal, looked after me, explained everything so well, my goggles were fogging up, Mickey gave me his goggles, like, yeah, still got so much to bloody to learn, but anyway, like, uh, that was a good little hit out, and to tell you what, they put me onto a jack, boys, thanks so much, like, that was cool, they're just like, oi, back here, like, so, proper spoon fed, but hey, shot a jack, can't believe it, if you've been a long time follower of our channel, you know I've got a soft spot for these fish, well, catching these fish, oh, I love catching them. And um, yeah, they're just unbelievable. Really good fish, I'm super stoked with that. All right, so I've been told that later on in the week, we're heading offshore. So we might end up taking my boat, I'm not too sure, but we're heading offshore. We're gonna chase maybe some, some craze, some tuskies, stuff like that, have a bit of a look around. My bucket list spearing fish when I started was a jack, a tusky and a cray got the jack on the first day you like you wouldn't read about it but anyway uh thursday or friday the weather looks like it's coming really good uh and we're heading offshore so see you then all right guys now this was d-day for me and to say i was nervous is an understatement it's one thing diving in a river around pylons where you're very safe and no sharks but this is morton bay we got some of the biggest sharks in the world lurking around here and plenty of them so i was a little bit nervous but anyway here we go Alrighty, now it definitely is like D-Day because we're back out and we're going spearing again. We've got a boaty with us, Clino. Hi guys. Spearing with Miggy again and this time we're pretty much offshore. So only shallow but it's like next step up from the tweed I guess. So we'll be looking for jacks and crays and bloody deweys and all sorts of stuff here. The, the odd snapper but highly doubt I'll get a snap, eh Miggy? Yeah, I don't know. Man. Gotta be pretty good at that, eh? <laughs> anyway, we're about to jump in the water. I'm a little bit nervous. I've done me nervous uh, poo. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, oh well. No time to hike the present. Let's do it. You live for it, don't you? Yeah, I love no, <laughs> no worries at all. <laughs> Bodie, mate, no. if, if I come up screaming. What you, if I'm already screaming watching you guys go down? There? You know what to do, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> Don't run me over and come get me straight away. This is, well, I'll just, you know. Scoop me up in that, mate. And yeah, so sunrise, straight in. Here we go.
an area I've fished many times, but my first time having a visual of it underwater, it was just absolutely mind blowing. Watching Mickey waste no time dive down and putting a spear into something, I was greatly anticipating what he was gonna bring up. I had half an idea since he was hunting it under a little crevice like this. I couldn't believe it. A crayfish in the first five minutes. This is a species that I've been wanting to be able to target for a long, long time. After a few dives, I spotted some feelers hanging out uh, the edge of the wreck. It took me a couple of goes to get down on him properly because the current was quite strong, but here he is just here, you can see the feeler just down to the left there. He looked quite small and the current was raging, so I decided not to take the shot, save him for another day. Coming up through the water column, just watching the fish and how quiet it is out there is just unbelievable. The fish life around this wreck was great, but not very many fish to actually spear. So we just enjoyed a few dives, getting used to getting down to a bit of depth. Just the quietness and relaxation also playing with a little bit of the wildlife. With the current running quite hard, we decided to move on and try another area. Now this spot just here, Mickey had just finished telling me that he started seeing quite a few bull sharks around here lately, so he had me a bit worried, to be honest. And the visibility here was really, really bad. Like, I mean, you couldn't really even see two or three meters in front of you. So watching him here dive down, into the distance and just disappear, I knew that I was absolutely no help should he run into any trouble. Once again, disappearing into the depth, I knew that I could not help him. I tried to go down a few metres, but to be completely honest with you, I was shitting bricks and I just felt completely out of my comfort zone here, especially in this murky water. So we decided to leave it for another day and stay safe. This guy's a maniac. All right, 5.30 in the morning. First run in Mickey's tinny. Let's do it. Look out for this crazy man on the water. <laughs> Mickey's first crab pot. Do I place it or fan? Just throw it. Fling it like a pizza, mate. Make sure the fish is on the bottom but when it hits the water. Oh, mate. Well, well thrown. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's totally facing the wrong way then, filming the hole. I had the camera reversed around, filming the wall. All right, anyway, we're here. We're going to go have a look. Mickey's told me there's sharks down here, so I'll be careful. I'll be pretty much... Right behind him the whole way. Seen two big bullies last time he was here, so the viz isn't great. It's better than the other day, but it's not great. So anyway, we're gonna go in, take you for a ride, and see how much we can show you in this slot. See if we can bring me back. There's <laughs> heaps of bait all through the water here. Under we go. Visibility today was better but not great still, but a lot better than the other day. I was really quite nervous still, just getting used to everything, hoping I didn't get eaten by a shark. I was that nervous that this wobby gong right here, I actually laid right on top of him, did not even see him, tried to give him a cuddle basically. These fellas can pack a really nasty bite. Once you're down there, it's quite beautiful. Just bait everywhere, heaps of wobby gong sharks and fish. Swimming back up these rocks, it feels like they just go forever. We're probably about 11 metres deep here. But no matter what, I felt safe. Wherever I turned, these boys here were right by my side.
one of the boys spears the first fish. You can see here that the bait actually knows what's about to happen before it happens. Bang! You can hear someone was just speared just then. And it was Mickey with a great mangrove jack. Couldn't believe it. Soon after, Pete dives way down and assumes his position. It's like hunting, trying to stay still, just waiting for the fish to come into you. Next minute, he rolls on up with a great mangrove jack as well. What a good start, a couple of minutes in and two big jacks. A quick high five and it was time to try and find me one. Right guys, so here was my first proper mental battle uh, with spear fishing. I mentioned before that one thing I was really worried about was sharks and it just so happens that one got interested in all the fish that were being speared. It was a bull shark and I could see it just below me here. I knew my very next dive, this shark was going to come and say g'day to me. They know you're there. You don't know they're there. So for me to breathe up like this and know that I was going to dive down and have my first experience with a bull shark, uh, yeah, it was pretty daunting for me. But anyway, I thought, stuff it. Let's just get it over and done with. <coughs> And sure enough, here he come. I quietly shit myself here and he literally got close enough that I could have just gave him a little poke in the nose. Not a big fella, only about six foot, but still enough to give you a bit of a scare. Not even knowing Mickey was there, he come in behind me, gave the shark a little poke just to let him know, hey mate, we're not food. Bit of a thumbs up and uh, we're ready to roll again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's a good footage, man. Yeah, yeah the bull shark's in my too. <laughs> oh, they just caught out the corner of my mouth again. Oh, I guess going for falling. <laughs> now, having confronted one of my fears face to face, even though it wasn't a big one, I still felt a sense of being safer. So, therefore, moving out onto the sand a little bit more where we looked under this big fallen tree. And in amongst all these blubber lip here, you can see, if you look closely, there's some really big jacks hanging out the back of them. We surfaced, had a chat about what we'd do and come back down, but they'd all moved on. Literally, not a jack to be seen when there was about 10 of them just before. So we decided to head back to the boat and maybe change spots. I said to the boys, I might just have one more drop where we seen the jacks earlier and just see what happens. And boy, am I glad I did. Diving down the rocks, following them the whole way down to about 10 metres deep, I looked to my right, off the back of the rock, I seen a jack sitting there. I waited patiently and still, he turned broadside and boom, I put a shot in him. I didn't even see Pete like two metres to the fish's right. That's how concentrated I was on putting a good shot into him. So there you go, my second jack, and he's a bloody good one. You got it, bro. You were just sitting over the other side of the rock. Yeah, I was watching him. I was watching him. Yeah. Well, could you oh, hear him? I, I, I could can, hear him now, I'm like. He was just sitting by himself. And I was just like, I was like, because he was looking at me. Oh. How good? Ah, you did all right. <laughs> oh. That's a healthy looking esky in there. Full of red. All right, so that's it for the jacks. We're gonna leave that. That's way more than a feed. Well, it's a feed each, so it's four of us there. One jack each. We're gonna go have a look, see if we can see a tusky. A bit deeper out here, so I don't know how I'll go, but these boys, they'll get down there. So, <laughs> so we're probably maybe at like 10 meters there. Yeah. Which, that's all right. I'm staying down there for a little bit, but once you've seen that shark, it's like, oh shit, where is he? You're down there just like, pitcher and you turn left and it's like, <laughs> It is, eh? Yeah, it is, so yeah. anyway. All right, over the ledges. Now the ledges in Moreton Bay are renowned for holding some of the biggest black spot tusk fish you'll ever see or hear about. 
Some fish can get up to 15 kilos in weight and this was the main target for these areas when spearfishing. I fished these areas a lot by line and never got a fish near that big but with spearing you can be a bit more selective, you can get down into the caves and have a good look. Here you see Mickey picking off a nice grass tusk fish. Good shot, absolute beautiful eating these fellas. I took my second dive down. This was probably the deepest I've dove so far, getting close to probably about 12 metres as our edge out onto the sand. I noticed a black spot tusk fish in amongst all the others. I lined him up and boom, I miss. <laughs> Proper cooked it. But anyway, I learned a lesson and he got to swim another day. We moved on to another set of ledges in the bay and the boys were telling me that these are probably the most eerie spots you'll dive in the whole bay. The bull sharks are big and they're aggressive in this area and this had me quite worried to be honest. But I pushed through and I dove down, scared to stick my head over the ledge and go right down to the bottom on the first dive. I stayed on top and just had a good look around. It literally looks like an underwater rainforest here without the trees. Rocks and ledges and boulders galore, fish everywhere, it was so good. Here out of the darkness a big eagle ray comes but when you see that out of the corner of your eye, you can often think it's a shark or something. Here I seen a grass tusky. He turns broadside to me and bang, I missed it again. The conditions quickly started to deteriorate with the tide here. The current runs really strong and the sediment gets thick quite quickly so we only had a very small window. Keeping in mind there is massive bull sharks in this area, I just couldn't relax properly and my breath holds got less and less and I just started to get a little bit more anxious about what was lurking around. But still I was having such a good time diving, I tried to not let it bother me. But this old Victor mower sparked my interest. Briggs and Stratton motor, two horsepower, I'm not too sure, but whoever's mowing the grass out here is not doing a very bloody good job. Now Breno, one of the boys that were with us, dove pretty deep here and got a nice little black spot tusk fish for his efforts. I was lucky enough to see this massive Queensland groper and spend a little bit of time with him. On my last dive here, you'll see me stop in my tracks, turn around and start coming back up. This is what I seen on my view. Diving down, I seen a big shadow come from down below the ledge. This one, a proper bull shark, about eight or nine feet long. This was enough for me to come up, hail the boat like it was a taxi, and get the hell out of there. There's a wolf in this. That's a bit bigger than five foot, that one. That was probably like about eight, nearly nine foot. Down on top of it, <laughs> yeah, because I seen the golden ones, I'm like, oh, there's some big goldens, and then I see that thing, and I'm like, dang, that is a pretty decent bully, that one. Yeah, you've got to pull it in for good luck. You'll be good luck. You reckon? Yeah. Alright, here we go. Loaded full of sand crab, I reckon. <laughs> Here it is. Here it is. Oh. <laughs> Man, it's like got notice and just been in there. They, they don't like jacks apparently. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. let's go, go home. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that concludes this episode. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed that. That's my first few times spearfishing. I'm absolutely falling in love with it. The way that it can be so relaxing, yet such an adrenaline rush at the same time. Uh, it's, yeah, it's just sucked me in and I'm, I'm, really, I'm really loving it. If you're thinking about getting into spearfishing, I 100% recommend it, but do it the right way. Go and do that course with Adam because it teaches you how to dive safely. It gives you a lot more confidence in your breath hold, in your body. Um, uh, just in the whole, just in the whole aspect of spearfishing. I want to thank the boys that I've been spearfishing with, Mick and Pete and Josh. Uh, guys, thanks heaps for looking after me. Special mention to Mick, mate. You've spent a lot of time with me. You've had my back the whole way. 
Mickey's just had a major neck surgery and he's sort of just getting back into it himself after a long time. So it's, it's been good learning and getting better together already. So mate, thanks heaps. I really appreciate what you've done for me. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. You're gonna see a bit more of that. I won't flood our YouTube with it, but it's gonna be a great little aspect to put in here and there. Big thanks to Dr. Mike, absolute champion. If you wanna go check out his YouTube channel and his Instagram, I'll put it here. There's a lot of stuff you can find out from that man. All right, guys, thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.